Angular is an open source JavaScript framework that helps developers develop, maintain, and deploy web apps with ease. It's got some of the best features you could want in a JavaScript UI framework. It's got two-way data binding, dependency injection, and a modular architecture. I would even go as far as saying that Angular is probably one of the best, if not the best, JavaScript frameworks out there. Welcome back devs, it's Sami, an Angular developer you found on this YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly get started with Angular. We'll be working on a super simple Angular project and deploying it on AWS using the Simple Storage Service, or S3. This video is meant to really be a simple overview of the development and deployment of an Angular application from the ground up. But if you want a more in-depth tutorial on Angular concepts, let me know in the comments below what Angular concepts you'd like to see covered on this channel. First, make sure you've got the latest versions of Node.js and Angular installed on your computer. First, install Node. You're going to need that to install Angular. Run Node-V to make sure you've got Node installed. Then run npm-v to make sure you've got npm installed. Now, if those commands talk back to you, you did great. If not, it's only going to get harder from here. Next up, install the Angular CLI. It's your buddy. It's your pal. It's your person attached to another by feelings of affection or personal regard. You'll also need your code editor of choice. I decided to use Vim to impress my coworkers, but then I conformed to peer pressure after they were just confused as to why I wasn't just using VS Code. Let's first create the Angular app. The simple app we are going to make is our own front-end UI for the Useless Facts API. When we go to this URL, we get a random useless fact provided by this wonderfully useful API. It's important to understand that when we go to this URL, we are getting a JSON object back as a response. It's also important to understand that a JSON object is a JavaScript object notation object. It holds data, not a machete. We'll create our application using the ng-new command. For this application, we don't need to worry about routing. We'll also be using Bootstrap 5 for our CSS framework, so we should use either SCSS or SAS as our stylesheet format. The Angular CLI will start doing its thing. This gives us some downtime to think about things like JavaScript letting me multiply strings. I mean, talk about dynamically typed, but if I have two strings that contain numbers and multiplied them together, that shouldn't work. I mean, I, I shouldn't be able to multiply strings. You multiply numbers, not strings. What's the point in even having quotation marks at that point? Just let everything be whatever they want to be at that point. Just let strings be numbers. Just let it be... Oh, it's done. Let's continue. After the project's created, you'll see a bunch of files. Let's just start by deleting the app.component.spec.ts file and remove the content of the app.component.html file. Now we'll go to our terminal and install ng-bootstrap and the Angular Component Development Kit. This will install Bootstrap 5 as well as some really useful Angular components and directives. To make sure IntelliSense and VS Code works for Bootstrap 5, make sure you have the HTML CSS support extension and restart VS Code after you install Bootstrap 5. We're going to run four commands. The first one will create the useless fact component in a components folder. The next will create the useless fact interface in an interfaces folder. Next we'll create the service. And the last command will create our environment variable files. In our environments folder, we have a development environment file and a normal environment file. Both hold our Angular environment variables. By default, our application will replace the normal environment file with the development environment file only while running the application using ng-serve. For now, let's place the same API URL in both environments. Let's move on to our interface. This interface will act as the model for the useless fact we get from the API, and it's got to use the same structure as the JSON response from the API. We need to create a service that will retrieve our facts for us. We need to use the HTTP client service provided by the HTTP client module. In the imports of our app.module.ts file, add the HTTP client module. While we're here, let's also add the clipboard module from the Angular CDK. Now in our service file, we'll inject the HTTP client service into our service by adding it to the constructor. Angular will handle the actual creation of this service. Dependency injection decouples classes better than Mario Kart decouples families. We'll create a get random fact property that returns an observable for our API. The get method will be used to grab the JSON from the URL declared in our environment. If we add a type argument to the get method, it'll grab the JSON and set the type using our useless fact interface. And set the type using our useless fact interface. Now in our component source file, we add a fact field in our useless fact component class and set the type of the variable to the interface we just created. 
It's not guaranteed we'll always have a fact there, so we can use an, an optional modifier to say that this variable could possibly be undefined. Let's inject the fact service into our component through the constructor and use it in a load fact function. We want to make sure our fact is set back to undefined if there is already a fact. This will come in handy later. Then we'll use the fact service to get a random fact and subscribe to the results. We'll set up two handlers, the next handler and error handler. The next handler will set the fact field to our observables results, and the error handler will just print a generic error to the console. Now in the template, we'll create a card with a header, body, and footer. The header will have a title and the body will have a div that checks to see if the fact is defined or not using the ngif structural directive. Inside the div, we'll have a paragraph that contains the fact text and a link to the fact source. In the footer, we'll have two buttons, one button to load another fact and one button to copy the permalink of the useless fact to our clipboard to share with people who didn't ask. We'll bind the first buttons click event to the load fact method, then we'll use the CDK to copy the permalink to our clipboard and show a cool little popover when we click on the button as well. We'll add an ng template that contains a spinner using bootstrap and we'll add an else to our ng if statement so that the spinner shows when the fact is undefined. Run ng serve to test this baby out now and there you have it, the useless fact web app. Now that you've created this totally awesome single page web app using Angular, you're probably asking yourself, how do I deploy this thing so I can prove to my high school web design teacher that just because I use JavaScript to change the content of my div instead of making multiple HTML pages doesn't mean I cheated on my web design lab? Or similar questions? We're going to be using AWS S3 for this, so make sure to sign up for an AWS account. Otherwise, you can use any other static website hosting platform. In the terminal, make sure we're in the root of our Angular project. Run the command ng-build. This will create all of the necessary files to deploy in your dist folder. All of that Angular code compiled down into this single index HTML file. <clears throat> now let's head to AWS and create a new S3 bucket. Set the name of the bucket to the name of your site and set the AWS region to your preferred region. Disable block public access for the time being. You'll need to configure AWS security to make sure your site is secure enough, but we can disable it for this project. Create your bucket and go to the permissions tab and edit your bucket policy. Here you'll set the bucket policy to something like this. The policy I'm using here is simple enough to get you started. Just replace my bucket name with yours. Afterwards, go to the properties tab, scroll down to enable static website hosting and enable it. Make sure to set the index and error document both to your index.html. You'll now see a website endpoint generated for your bucket. Now go to the objects tab and upload the files generated in your disk folder. Congratulations, your web app is deployed. Now you can share this website with all of your friends and family to show everyone where you learned that cat's urine glows in blacklight? Thanks for watching devs. Let me know if there's anything else you want to learn about Angular in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like button if you like this video, and if you want more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.